In the 19th century, a process was invented by Ostwald called the Ostwald oxidation of ammonia. This process took ammonia and converted it into nitrogen oxides, which were eventually then able to be turned into nitrates by dissolving the nitrogen oxide into water. If we look up at the board here, the oxidation of ammonia uh, is a very simple reaction producing nitrogen monoxide. That oxide is then further oxidized with oxygen from the air into nitrogen dioxide. The nitrogen dioxide is then dissolved in water to produce nitric acid. However, the problem in the 19th century was the major source of ammonia was in fact the destruction of organic material. In other words, they had to thermally decompose things like uh, bone or animal products or wool or other organic natural materials to produce ammonia. Very inefficient and also uh, very low yield. Then we come around to the Haber process. Uh, Fritz Haber or Haber uh, discovered that with the correct uh, combination of catalysts and temperature, pressure, etc., he could shift the equilibrium and actually produce ammonia uh, artificially from atmospheric nitrogen. And he was able to take and make mass produce uh, uh, ammonia, therefore producing the ammonia required to produce nitrates. Now, one story that goes around is that uh, the real cause for the First World War was not, in fact, the assassination of the Archduke Ferdinand, uh, which all the history teachers will tell you, uh, but that, in fact, that was the precipitating cause. The actual cause, as reported in many uh, books and journals, could very well have been the Haber process, the invention of the Haber process because it allowed the German industrial complex to massively produce nitrates, which they needed in order to launch a war. Uh, up until World War I, nitrates were imported, primarily from South America. The primary source was, again, animal droppings, natural processes. However, once we had a commercially feasible method of producing ammonia, we could then convert it very quickly and easily industrially to produce nitrates. Nitrates were in fact required to produce gunpowder. Not only that, but nitrates were needed to produce fertilizers so that the farmers of Germany could in fact produce enough food to support not only the working population, but the army. So two very important factors relied upon the production of nitrates. What I would like to demonstrate is actually the Oswald oxidation of ammonia, of course, on a very simple laboratory scale. I'm going to use ammonia, which is going to actually be gas that is going to be released from aqueous ammonia solution. Remember that this is approximately 14 molar, and it has a high concentration of ammonia gas. Now, I'm going to pour uh, a quantity of it into the flask so that this will be our source of ammonia. Now, if you can turn the exhaust fan on for me, please. Now, the oxidation requires a catalyst, and the catalyst that we're going to use is going to be some platinum wire. And in order to speed up the process, we're going to get the platinum wire glowing red. I hope. And get it into the flask. If you dim the lights, hopefully we will see a red glow.
just to release some more ammonia. I think I'll try heating that platinum again. Okay. Frequently that happens and in an air conditioned room the catalyst will cool off. Now, if you are going to do a demonstration, this is possibly as simple as you could do it by showing the catalytic action of the platinum. What's happening is on the surface of the platinum wire, we actually have the oxidation taking place. The problem with this demonstration doing it this way is the fact that there's a very limited air supply. There's very little oxygen in the flask. So I'm going to ask John to come over and give me a hand here. And what we're going to do is we are going to intentionally enrich the oxygen level from a cylinder of oxygen gas. Ready? And by bubbling, whoa. Okay. Told you there might be one. Yeah. Okay. Slow down. There we go. Now, you'll notice here a very interesting phenomenon, and that is the fact that we have produced a flame, the oxygen, this is sometimes referred to as an inverted flame, the oxygen is actually burning on the surface so that the ammonia combustion is taking place on the surface of the oxygen gas, and this is referred to as an inverted flame, greatly increasing the production of the nitrogen oxide, and this is what would be done in the industrial process. Now, a demonstration like this, of course, is a demonstration of is a demonstration of catalysis. It's a demonstration of equilibrium because I have just shifted the equilibrium by radically increasing the concentration of oxygen, causing that reaction to proceed at a much greater rate. Now, where you would want to use this would be your choice. I might point out something. You might have noticed that the flame was so hot that it actually melted the platinum so that most of the platinum wire actually went into the liquid at the bottom. I don't know if you can see that or not, but uh, it actually melted off. Uh, this demonstration is obviously very dynamic. You need lots of ventilation. Don't attempt this if you don't have a good ventilation system. And if you are intimidated by explosions, I would suggest that you keep away from it because you're always going to get that pop. And uh, you have to be prepared for it and your students have to be prepared for it.